In this tutorial, we're going to be doing some more practical JavaScript exercises, getting you to manipulate and work with the DOM. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to be doing some more exercises. This time we're going to be focusing on something that looks a little bit more like a web page and working through some exercises to update the menu and content that's within it. So if you have a second before we start, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorial updates. And if you're looking for the exercises themselves, there's a link to them in the description below. So there are five exercises for you to complete and you can either go ahead and have a go at those now and come back and skip to the solution if you get stuck or want to see a different way to solve it. Or you can simply watch through the video and see some sample solutions to the exercises. So let's get started with exercise one. And exercise one is asking us to move the contents of the two paragraphs into one single P tag. So there can't be any empty P tags left on the page. And the text that's in the current two paragraph tags needs to be combined together. So if you look at the actual HTML markup that we've got here, uh, we have a hero section and inside it are two paragraph tags, which you can see here on the page. So the idea is we want to get the contents from both of those paragraph tags, combine them together and to not leave any empty P tags. So there are a couple of different ways that you could approach this. You could try and get all of the text out of both of those paragraph tags and combine them together, delete those existing paragraph tags and then create a new one with that combined block of text. But what I'm going to do is grab a reference to both of the paragraph tags and then insert the text from one to the other and then remove the empty P tag. So you can see in our output that we've got the two paragraphs are now contained. You can see paragraph text one is at the bottom and paragraph two text is at the top. So logically we might want to swap that round. So let's just replace the indexes in our paragraphs node list. And then all we need to do now is remove this existing paragraph from the document. Now you can see in our output that we've got one paragraph tag with the text of the original two paragraphs combined inside it. So as I say, there are different ways to achieve this, but I thought this approach was interesting because it shows how to actually remove elements from the page and it's a short amount of code, which is reasonably easy to read. So that's exercise one. Let's have a look at exercise two. So exercise two is asking us to reduce the font size of the paragraph text that we've just combined to be smaller than the size of the menu text and it actually needs to be half the size of that text, which if we were to look at the CSS or to analyze the page in our developer tools, we should be able to work out the font size of the menu items. It's actually 18 pixels on my device at the moment, but that's quite a manual process and you might want to, but that's quite a manual process and you might want to automate that within your JavaScript code. So let's imagine that we don't know what the font size is of those elements. And let's use a few JavaScript functions to actually calculate what half of that value should be. So I'm just going to get a reference to one of those list items inside of the menu. And then I'm going to call a special function which is actually available on the window object called getComputedStyle, which will allow me to get the font size of that list item element as it appears on the page. So if you actually have a look at the output that we get from that, you'll see that that function returns a value of 16 pixels. So it wasn't actually 18 pixels as I said earlier on, it is actually 16. So because that data is represented as a string, we can't do any direct maths on it. So what we need to do is convert it into a number so that we can divide it by two to get the half value that we need for our paragraph text. So wrapping the computed style function inside of parseInt, we'll convert that to a number, which will allow us to easily divide it by two. So now all we need to do is update the style of the paragraph tag to have the new font size. And don't forget when you're assigning a font style value to the style property, you'll need to ensure that you include the unit. For example here I've added pixels onto the computed half font size. So that's pretty much it for exercise two. It's probably a bit of a strange exercise because you probably wouldn't need to do this. You'd handle all of your styling directly in your style sheets. 
And if you're using a preprocessor like SAS, or even if you're just using relative units like REMS, you can easily do these kind of calculations without relying on JavaScript. So let's move on to exercise three. So exercise three is asking us to move the menu item called services to be before the about menu item. So moving elements around on the page isn't too difficult as long as you're able to select them easily, but because the actual menu items themselves don't have any notable identifiers, we're going to need to use some CSS selectors to ensure we're selecting the right one. So let's first of all get a reference to those two elements, the services and about menu items. So here I've just used the nth child selector to make sure we've got the second and third items in that unordered list. We could have potentially looped through all of the items in the menu and checked their inner text to see if it matched the string for the menu item that we're looking for. But again, as this is something you probably wouldn't do normally using JavaScript, this provides us with a nice and quick, easy way to select those elements and we know they're not going to move if we were to reload the page. So with the two elements selected, it's simply a matter of inserting the services element to before the about element begins, or alternatively, we could do it the other way around and insert the services after the about element. So here you can see that the services element is now before the about element in the document flow. And I've used the insert adjacent element function rather than insert adjacent HTML because I've got a direct reference to the services and about elements and I'm not inserting a blob of HTML text. So that's one possible solution for exercise three. If, if you did come up with a different solution, then feel free to post it in the comments below. But let's have a look at exercise four. So exercise four is a simple one. We just need to create two new entries in the menu, the items FAQs and pricing. So this could quite easily be solved by using that insert adjacent HTML function and just putting a blob of HTML onto the end or the start if you want those new entries to be at the start of the menu. But I'm just gonna create those two elements individually using the document.create element function and then append those as children to the overall menu. So you can see in our result that we've now got the FAQs and pricing elements in the unordered list. And although that was a bit more work than just inserting the HTML text, it does afford us some more flexibility as we've got references to the FAQ and pricing elements. So for example, if we wanted to move them about or remove them at some point, we've got direct access to those elements without having to reselect them with a further document query selector. So that was nice and simple. Let's move on to the final exercise, exercise five. So exercise five is something that no one in their right mind would ever do with JavaScript now, but it's basically to add a hover effect to the menu item so that when the user hovers over one of them, the background and font size change. Maybe we add a new background color and increase the font size, for example. And this is something that can be done really, really easily with CSS with the hover selector. Or even if you were going to use JavaScript, you could actually just apply and remove classes from the particular element when it's hovered to make the changes to the style. But the exercise is asking you to write it in pure JavaScript, so we're not going to be using any CSS classes or hover selectors. We need to write functions that update the element when the mouse is moved over and leaves one of the menu items. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll first set up a hover effect function. So we'll be receiving a mouse pointer event. So the element that's been hovered over will be inside the event.target. And then it's simply just a case of updating some of the styles for that element. And I'm just gonna hard code those values as a slight gray color and also a font size of 20 pixels. So that function is going to be called when we hover over an element. We actually need to remove the hover effect once the mouse is no longer hovering over one of those elements. So let's create another function to just reset the background color and font size. So we'll just reset the background color to white and the font size to 16. 
Ideally we would store this on the hover effect so that if we change the styles in the style sheet, this code wouldn't break. But for the simplicity of this exercise, this should be fine just to reset it to what we have already. So with those two functions defined, all we need to do is actually apply the functions to the mouse over and mouse leave events for each of the menu items. So that's just a case of selecting all of the menu list items and then applying the hover effect and normal effect functions to the mouse over and mouse leave events respectively. So let's try that out. So that works just fine and of course we could update the element styling in either the hover effect and normal effect functions to apply whichever styles you want to see when those events are triggered. So as I say at the start of this exercise you would never do this with JavaScript, there are so many better ways you can do it without having to even touch JavaScript, but I think this is a useful exercise for how you would set up event listeners for particular events, access the elements that triggered the event and then make some changes to them. So that completes exercise 5 and brings us to the end of this tutorial. Hopefully you've improved your skills by completing these exercises and picked up a few tips that you can use in your own projects. Don't forget to check out the rest of the JavaScript DOM exercise tutorials here on the Junior Developer Central channel. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorials.